Welcome friends. Now we are going to solve this practical problem on ratio analysis. Ratio analysis is one of the important methods of analysis of financial statements. Friends, this session is going to be very interested because at the end of this session, you will be able to answer various multiple choice question on this topic. And at the same time, you will be able to solve the practical questions on ratio analysis. Right. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, here question on the screen says following is the balance sheet of Tata Bata Limited Pune as on 31st March 2021. So here balance sheet is given which shows the assets and liabilities of Tata Bata Limited on 31st March 2021. Here uh, question asks us to calculate current ratio, liquid ratio and debt to equity ratio. See friends in order to calculate the ratios in account you must be aware about the formulas. Like uh, to calculate the current ratio, the formula is current assets divided by current liabilities. Here to calculate the current ratio, we have to divide current assets by current liabilities, right? And at the same time, you must be aware that what do you mean by current assets and which items are included in the current assets. And at the same time, what do you mean by current liabilities? So see friends, current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash within a period of one year or within a period of 12 months, right? One more time, current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash within a period of one year. So stock, debtors, bills receivable, cash in hand, cash at bank, all these are considered as the current assets in accounting. Here I have mentioned the important items which are included in the current assets. So here current assets include stock, debtors, bills receivable, cash in hand and cash at bank, prepaid expenses, marketable securities, short term high quality investment and work in progress. So all these items are included in current assets. So here multiple choice question can be asked like that current assets include an option uh, can be given. So you can if you are aware about that the which items are included in current assets you can answer that question quickly right. Similarly current liabilities includes creditors, bills payable, bank overdraft, outstanding expense and proposed dividend. So current liabilities are those liabilities which are payable within a period of 12 months or in a current year. So that's why those liabilities are known as current liabilities, right? Now I hope that uh, concept of current assets and current liabilities is clear here. Current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash within a period of one year. And current liabilities are those liabilities which are payable in current year. Right. One more important point related to current ratio is that current ratio is also known as 2 is to 1 ratio because it is expected that current assets of the business should be twice the current liabilities of the business. Right. So this is desirable ratio. Current ratio uh, should be 2 is to 1 or that's why uh, this ratio is also known as 2 is to 1 ratio. So here multiple choice question can be asked like that current ratio is also known as dash or option can be 1 is to 2, 3 is to 2 like this and 2 is to 1. So here answer is 2 is to 1 ratio. Current ratio is also known as 2 is to 1 ratio. Now let us uh, calculate the current ratio for this question. So we know that to calculate the current ratio we uh, have to divide current assets by current liabilities. So let us first calculate the amount of current assets. In present question, current assets include stock, debtors, bills receivable, cash in hand, and cash at bank. So here, stock two lakh fifty thousand, debtors one lakh fifty thousand, bills receivable seventy thousand, cash in hand ten thousand, and cash at bank forty thousand. So total of these current assets is five lakh twenty thousand. It means here current assets are five lakh twenty thousand. Similarly, now we have to calculate the current liabilities. Here, current liabilities includes creditors and bills payable debenture it is not current liability it is long term liability or long term debt right so current liabilities includes creditors and bills payable only so here in this question current liabilities 1 lakh 50000 plus 75000 is uh, rupees 2 lakh 25000 right as now uh, 
uh, we have calculated the amount of current assets and current liabilities. Now we can easily calculate the current ratio because we have we just have to divide current assets by current liabilities. So here current assets five lakh twenty thousand divided by current liabilities two lakh twenty five thousand and the ratio is two point thirty one is to one, right? So here current ratio is two point thirty one is to one. So friends, uh, as we discussed in previous slide that uh, ideal current ratio is 2 is to 1 or the current ratio should be 2 is to 1 or current asset should be twice of the current liability. So here we can say that current uh, assets are sufficient to meet the current liabilities of the uh, business. Here I, I would like to mention one important point related to current ratio that current ratio shows the uh, uh, solvency position of the business or ability of business to meet the current liabilities right so it shows short term solvency of the business right here current ratio is 2.31 s to 1 right i hope uh, the uh, concept of current ratio is clear here and uh, yeah, you are now able to calculate the current ratio right so that's why at the beginning of this video, I said that you up at the end of this session, you will be able to answer the various multiple choice questions as well as you will be able to solve the practical problems on the ratio analysis, right? And ratio analysis is a topic on which the uh, multiple choice questions can be asked for one marker and as well as there can be a, 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 a long answer type question okay for like 10 marks or 8 marks right so uh, now let us move on the next ratio so here we have calculated the current ratio now next next ratio is a uh, liquid ratio we have to calculate the liquid ratio and for liquid ratio formula is liquid assets divided by liquid liabilities okay for current ratio formula uh, sorry for liquid ratio formula is liquid assets divided by liquid liability now let us see liquid assets means what so see friends liquid assets uh, are calculated uh, by uh, subtracting stock and prepaid expenses from current assets so here liquid assets is equal to current assets minus stock and prepaid expenses right so it is very simple indeed liquid assets is equal to current assets minus stock and prepaid expenses so in current question we have already calculated the amount of current assets in previous slides that is 520000 here uh, we have to subtract stock and prepaid expenses from the current assets so here in the question only stock is there uh, prepaid expenses are not there so 520000 minus 250000 it is 270000 so here liquid assets are uh, rupees 270000 right so here uh, you can easily answer if the question is like that what do you mean by liquid assets so you can answer that liquid assets uh, are those assets uh, which are uh, liquid or which can be easily converted into the cash immediately converted into the cash those assets are liquid assets here stock and prepaid expenses are subtracted from current assets because stock may take time to be converted in the cash because stock of finished goods needs to be sell in the market and then uh, it, uh, the cash can be generated against the stock okay so liquid assets are calculated by subtracting stock and prepaid expenses from current assets right so here li liquid assets are 270000 Similarly, we can calculate liquid liabilities by subtracting bank overdraft and outstanding expenses from current liabilities. It means liquid liabilities is equal to current liabilities minus bank overdraft and outstanding expenses. In current question, we have already calculated the amount of current liabilities which is 2,25,000 but here bank overdraft and outstanding expenses are not there. So here current liabilities minus uh, nil there is no amount of bank overdraft and outstanding so that's why here liquid liabilities are same as current liabilities that is 225000 so here liquid liabilities 225000 uh, okay now we can easily calculate the liquid ratio so here liquid ratio is equal to liquid assets 270000 divided by uh, liquid liabilities 225000 so here liquid ratio is 1.2 as to 1 
right 1.2 s to 1 okay so here liquid ratio is 1.2 s to 1 so it is easy to calculate now uh, here uh, important point related to liquid ratio is that liquid ratio is also known as quick ratio okay so here uh, keep in mind that liquid ratio is also known as quick ratio or acid test acid test ratio acid test ratio okay so liquid ratio is also known as quick ratio or acid test ratio if the question asks us to calculate quick, quick ratio in that case you can use the formula quick assets divided by quick liabilities it means instead of liquid you can use the word quick right now i hope that the concept of liquid ratio is also clear now let us calculate the next ratio and next ratio is debt to equity ratio and formula to calculate debt to equity ratio is long term debt divided by shareholders funds so here uh, uh, i would like to mention uh, here that long term debts includes uh, bank loan and uh, debentures okay so long term debt includes debentures and bank loan and shareholders funds include uh, so here in pre present question uh, there is uh, only debentures there are only debentures 6 lakhs 30000 so here long term debt is 6 lakh 30000 there is no bank loan and uh, shareholders funds shareholders funds include share capital reserves plus profit and loss uh, uh, profit and loss account so uh, shareholders fund is also known as owner's equity or net worth of the business right shareholders funds are also known as owner's equity or net worth of the business which is calculated as share capital plus reserves plus profit and loss account right so here shareholders funds are share capital 3 lakh reserves answer plus 60000 and profit and loss account 45000 so here shareholders fund are 4 lakh 5000 and long term debt is 6 lakh 30000 so here uh, it is not liquid ratio sorry it is debt to equity ratio basically so debt to equity ratio is equal to 6 lakh 30000 long term debt divided by uh, 4 lakh 5000 which is shareholders fund so here debt to equity ratio is 1.55 as to 1 right and here uh, it is desirable that uh, debt to equity ratio should not be more than 2 it means debt should not be twice of the owner's equity okay so here in this case debts are uh, below uh, uh, 2 uh, level or the, it, uh, they are not twice or more than twice they are below twice of the uh, shareholders fund so here debt to equity ratio is uh, good we can say uh, here in the form okay so in this way debt to equity ratio is calculated and this debt to equity ratio shows the relationship between owner's fund or net worth to external debt or capital here debt to equity ratio can uh, be calculated with other formula that is total debt okay some uh, uh, authorities of the opinion that uh, instead of long term debt only we one should take or uh, we should take total debt of the firm to calculate the debt to equity ratio okay so accordingly we can use other formula but this formula is widely accepted so uh, here we have calculated the debt to equity ratio with this formula only like long term debt divided by shareholders fund right so here uh, we have finished with this uh, question friends now let us uh, take another example which is on the uh, trading and profit and loss account and here uh, the uh, on the screen you can sh uh, see the question it says the following is the trading and profit and loss account of Tata Bata limited for the year ended 31st March 2021 and from this uh, trading and profit and loss account we have to calculate gross profit ratio net profit ratio and operating ratio so now see in order to calculate gross profit ratio we need to use this formula gross profit ratio is equal to gross profit divided by sales multiplied by 100 so this formula is very easy indeed and here in the question itself uh, we have the amount of gross profit which is 1 lakh so here in the question amount of gross profit is 1 lakh and amount of sales is 2 lakh rupees so <laughs> Uh, 1 lakh divided by 2 lakh multiplied by 100 it gives us 50 percent so it means in this question gross profit ratio is 50 percent or gross profit of the business is 50 percent of its sales and friends see 
as these are the profitability profitability ratio gross profit ratio and net profit ratio higher the ratio it is good for the business okay it shows the profitability of the business similarly we have to calculate the net profit ratio and formula for net profit ratio is net profit divided by sales multiplied by 100 so here amount of net profit is 40000 so 40000 divided by 2 lakh which is the amount of sales multiplied by 100 it gives us 20 percent so here net profit ratio is 20 percent now thirdly we have to calculate the operating ratio for operating ratio formula is cost of goods sold plus operating expenses divided by sales multiplied by 100 so here we have to use this formula operating for operating ratio operating ratio is equal to cost of goods sold plus operating uh, expenses less uh, divided by sales multiplied by 100 so see friends cost of goods sold uh, can be calculated uh, by subtracting gross profit from the sales so here uh, cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit so in current question sales are 2 lakh and gross profit is 1 lakh so here cost of goods sold is 1 lakh Similarly, we can calculate the operating expenses. See, operating expenses are those expenses which are related to the operating activities of the business or core op op activities of the business for which purpose the business organization is established. It means all those expenses which are related to uh, run the business. Okay or which are related to the operating activities of the business are considered as operating expenses so here on the debit side of profit and loss account you can see office expense interest selling expenses etc so we know that office expenses it are uh, these are related to the operating activities but interest interest is not related to the operating activity it is a finance expense basically interest is a finance expense then selling expenses these are related to the operating activities okay so here in order to calculate operating expenses we have to add office expenses and selling expenses right so here in current question operating expenses are office expenses 30000 and selling expenses are 24000 okay so here cost of goods sold 1 lakh operating uh, expenses includes 30000 of office expense and 24000 of selling expense right so here operating ratio uh, will be 77 percent right so in this way you can calculate the operating ratio this ratio shows the percentage of total expenses to the sales amount of sales so here operating ratio is 77 percent it means total 77 percent are the operating expenses of this business organization right so in this way friends you can calculate the, the various ratios and uh, uh, you can explain uh, or you can answer the multiple choice questions which are asked on the uh, ratios here friends here uh, now uh, i would like to stop here uh, uh, we are going to take next session or we are going to make next video on the ratio analysis this is the part one of the ratio analysis okay so part two will be uh, uploaded soon in the on the uh, uh, youtube so make sure that you have subscribed the channel and uh, like share this video with your friends thank you friends thanks for watching